am Lisa. And I'm Jonathan. And we're Creative for Learning. Today we're going to talk about the wonderful world of worksheets and why some teachers think they're the devil. Ooh, the warmth of fresh copied papers. <laughs> and the glorious smell of ditto papers. If I had a paper cut for every time I heard someone talk down about worksheet teachers, you probably all know the concept of the worksheet and video teacher. You know, that teacher we imagine never engages her classroom and sits behind her desk organizing her fantasy football team or shopping for his new season wardrobe. I love how you switch pronouns there, his or her. Anyway. There's something about this term worksheet, though, that carries this negative connotation nowadays. We recently, even this week, saw a discourse on Facebook where teachers were discussing worksheets. And there was so much shame being heaped on people. Oh, the online shame heaping. <laughs> Here are some of the quotes from this conversation. Teachers that use lots of worksheets are crappy teachers. Boom! If you are dependent on worksheets and workbooks to get learning to stick, it's a problem. Worksheets do not challenge students to think, but rather to replicate. Worksheets are for lazy teachers who can't teach. Worksheets equal drone work. I gotta be honest, if we were using drones in the classroom, That'd be rad. that would be pretty rad. But I get what they say. But, and then this one, how about just stop it with the worksheets? It was all pretty negative, but I think part of this is because we're functioning under different ideas of what a worksheet is. So, what do we mean by worksheet? What do we mean or what do people mean? Yes, teachers. I think mean people. We're talking about the world Not of teaching. Us. When they say you worksheet teachers suck, what do they mean? <sighs> do we mean anything that is photocopied or printed? So, are we supposed to live in a world without photocopiers because everything on paper is a worksheet and therefore terrible? Do we mean a boring assignment that's on paper? Do we mean a graphic organizer? Do we mean shut up sheets? I like that. <laughs> shut up sheets. I like alliteration. Um, if it's in Google Drive, is it no longer a worksheet? Of course not, because you didn't photocopy it. No, no what if it's in an interactive notebook with scissors and glue? That's not photocopied either, and the students made it, so it's not a worksheet. Do, do we mean anything that is busy work? What is a worksheet? Yeah, or is it something else? Help us out here. Because we never defined this, I have a hunch this is shame language for something much more complex than we're giving it credit for. It's, it's all this, that's why we use words and we put quotes around. Uh, worksheet teacher or worksheets like that, you know? Um, especially with all the data that's coming out about how we learn better when we physically write things down as compared to typing them down. By being against worksheets, are we really saying that we're against students writing their thoughts down on paper with a pen? It doesn't seem like what we're really saying when we say worksheet. I think what we're really talking about here is depth and complexity. Critical thinking. Does the assignment actually get students thinking or not? I think we're talking about what Benjamin Bloom put in his graphic organizer. Was that a worksheet? When, that we call Bloom's Taxonomy. You've probably seen it in a pyramid or a light bulb or something like that. And it has various different levels with tons of different keywords, action words that we use when we're talking about these different levels of deeper thinking. Right, so it starts out with the lower level of knowledge, and that's when we remember previously learned information. Then comprehension, where we demonstrate understanding of the facts, and then application. Is it going to go up higher? Is it going to... Okay, uh, where we apply knowledge to actual situations. Then analysis, where we break down objects or ideas into simpler parts and find evidence to support our generalizations. Then synthesis, where we compile component ideas into a new whole or propose alternative solutions. And finally, evaluation, the highest level, where we make and defend judgments based on internal evidence or external criteria. So when we're talking 
bad about worksheets, which level of Bloom's taxonomy and higher order thinking skills are we saying these bad worksheets accomplish? Are we saying we're against knowledge worksheets? Or did I just accidentally curse? Worksheets? Anyways, <laughs> comprehension <laughs> worksheets? <laughs> Some people Those think dang pieces of worksheets. <laughs> For some people, worksheet is a curse word. Anyway, yes. um, application worksheets, analysis worksheets, synthesis worksheets, evaluation worksheets. I imagine we're talking about knowledge and comprehension level stuff. Aren't we also talking about some of the really effective, te ineffective teaching methods? or classroom management methods connected with teachers who hand out knowledge and comprehension worksheets a lot? And are we also talking about how boring and out of date those worksheets look most of the time? So if we are using paper assignments where students were applying, analyzing, synthesizing, and evaluating the world, their novels or whatever they're studying, we'd be okay with that, right? I have a hard time imagining where if my students were applying something, analyzing something, synthesizing, or evaluating, that I would ever have a problem with that, <laughs> regardless of what it is, I think. Um, someone else in that Facebook conversation said, there's an art to utilizing a worksheet. And I totally agree with this. There's an art to utilizing anything in the classroom. Teaching is an art. It doesn't matter which classroom tool we're using. At whatever level of Bloom's taxonomy we're sitting during the day, it takes artful teaching to engage the students and make the learning stick. I think this is one of the reasons we're so tired at the end of the day. It's not because we were teaching. It's because we were acting. We were singing. We were performing. We dancing. were engaging. We were dancing. If we're doing it, right? That's how we make this stuff. That's that's one of the ways we engage is through the art of it, right? How do you take a worksheet or a PowerPoint or a Prezi or a project or anything? It doesn't matter if it's a worksheet or some creative collaborative thing on Skype with another country. It's boring if it's boring. And it takes this art of teaching to bring it alive. Another factor here right now is the large con teacher conversation about student-driven learning. Giving students the reins to their learning instead of the teacher being the deliverer of all information. And in, in with that conversation in mind, I find it hard to imagine a worksheet does that very well at student-driven learning, right? But but even, even if we're doing super creative activities and, and learning uh, you know, assignments that are student driven, even if we're doing like a whole day a week of student genius time or whatever, if we aren't directing them artfully into the right way, then they're gonna end up bored because they don't know how to do that necessarily, right? And so I just I think even if we dove completely into a whole week of genius time with students, at some point that's going to end up feeling like worksheets if we're not careful and if we're really like just blaming worksheets and not really thinking critically about thinking critically. Worksheets, no matter how good they are at applying, analyzing, synthesizing, and evaluating, are more difficult to make student-directed. They required students to go, they require students to go independently practice and come back. And the teacher has to do this artful dance of making the discussion about what they wrote down on their worksheet interesting and helpful the second time around. Yeah, so do you think, I'm just thinking about the different levels, do you think worksheets have a more negative connotation in elementary or secondary? I haven't cataloged who I hear people, like when I hear negative comments, if they're elementary or secondary. I mean, I guess it would depend on your school environment and whether worksheet is like a bad word at your school. Yeah. Because um, in elementary school, I mean, the concept of like a worksheet teacher where you just give papers and sit and do other stuff. Um, it feels like it's secondary. It, it, to More. answer your question would be secondary. Um, the worksheet and video teacher. Is, it's just bad, though. It's just bad, but I think in general we picture a secondary teacher when we picture that. I do. Yeah. Maybe that's because I am a secondary teacher. What like? But I, I have a hard time picturing an elementary teacher about being able to do that. 
Well, maybe they do. You mean like just letting them watch a movie? Oh, what? Just watch a movie? <laughs> well, no, I got I, it. No, we no, we no, use no, the no. word video, worksheet <laughs> and video, but worksheet and movie, now I got it. Throw on Elf. Go for it. No. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I was just asking. Like, it's true. They, I that's, bet it's... That's not good. Like, yeah. there's times when you can make it work. Um... As long as it's engaging and you're using it like literature, but then um, there are definitely times like when you're working with small groups in an elementary classroom, there's got to be activities that the kids can do that are they can do independently while you're working with a small group. Or some of those worksheets? And so s some of the, at least in my classroom, they're just practice. They like were independent, independent practice, practice, but they were in the form of a work. They're a piece of paper sheet. with stuff that and they're then, working on a sheet. I right? actually <laughs> used to do a lot of like math centers where we'd use scrap paper, and then it was the kids doing, like filling it out the way that I kind of explained it. But making there was their own worksheet. making their own, not making their own worksheet. It was like them doing their own math problems, okay. um, and that used to confuse the heck out of parents because they'd be like I got this paper and I don't know what's happening on the paper and I'm like oh <laughs> your student was learning your student just trust was me learning. your student was learning <laughs> it, was, that was, it was good look at it that's it learning good. there you go no it really was good but it was just kind oh. of funny because it confused them because it was not organized in an organized fashion usually that's funny are, are the parents <laughs> and the admins so used to like the way we prove that a student learned is we have an organized pre-printed assignment and question on a paper and the student filled it yeah. in and that proves they learned because usually assess to people outside usually assessments oftentimes are, are printed that. out things with the answers uh, so how do we change that right that's part of the conversation is how do we because so much of what we do in the classroom is driven by how people judge it on the outside because of just how much lack of respect there is for teaching mm. so today ultimately you know our goal was to hopefully first release some of us from the shame of using worksheets where students do work on a sheet right and we wanted to focus the conversation to where we think it really matters which is do our current worksheets challenge our students to think or just to replicate which is what that guy said in one of the people said in the facebook post um, and how can we adjust our worksheets or our projects or our really creative interactive online things um, so that they are actually making students think and not just replicate how do we adjust them or find new ones that really encourage deeper thinking? Uh, we think that we've created some of those deep thinking resources over in our teaching store. So come check those out. If you're looking for grammar or writing or novel resources, head on over there. There's a link down in the description today. Um, and then we just want to hear what you have to say about this in general and to uh, share your thoughts, hear your questions, your comments, and keep this conversation going. I was going to bring up that I remember one time we got a feedback saying something about worksheets. Yeah. And and we we turned and looked at each other and it was like they didn't understand the purpose of this activity. Yeah. And you even put the pedagogy yeah. and like what to yeah, do. Yeah, because students were doing work on a sheet and so it was a worksheet. It was a worksheet. Yeah. And it was like, no, I think you missed the actual deeper level thinking yeah. for this. So how long have you been teaching and what subject or grade level do you teach? There you go. Throw your answer to that down in the comments. That way we'll get to learn from each other. Maybe you'll even get to connect up with some fellow created for learningers. Is that a, I made that up. Uh, <laughs> some fellow collaborators down there who may be in your grade or your subject matter so we can all grow this community a little closer. So thanks for being here. Uh, share this somewhere. Subscribe. Follow us. Um, Ultimately, we just want to impact your lives and help help us out by starting helpful conversations. So thanks for being here and mm -hmm. keep being awesome.